Insulin is slowing down the rate at which the mitochondria are working in a fat cell, essentially priming that fat pump to store energy rather than use it. And in contrast, if insulin is low and arguably ketones elevated, that is stimulating the metabolic rate. So it's pushing this fat cell to shift its characteristic of wanting to store energy to actually using it, not just using it, but wasting it. It's burning through fat uh, and even glucose just for the sake of producing heat, which is chemically speaking, an evidence of an inefficiency. But of course, in our um, calorie rich environment, what we would call an inefficiency ends up being a huge blessing because it's helping the body uh, have another outlet for all the energy that it's taking in. Thanks for joining us. It's a great time. Come next year for the party in Santa Barbara. Hey, friends. Welcome back to Metabolic Health Summit. We're at the last day here, and Ben Bickman just got off the stage, Dr. Ben Bickman, and you gave an amazing talk all about how insulin affects our metabolic rate. And a few things that really popped out for me, Dr. Ben, is how in, in type 1 diabetics, mm -hmm. their metabolic rate is a roughly, do you say, 30% faster pre-insulin treatment? Which yeah, it ends up being 300 calories, so about 20% in these people. Yeah, so they detected that there was a 300 calorie difference from where they should have been. Uh, and then once they gave them insulin therapy, the metabolic rate then matched what they expected. And that was this swing of 300 calories. So pretty powerful shift. That's amazing. Yeah. Now, now if we can break down kind of what, I know you talked about this and you have a book coming out in, in July, later this summer, that's gonna expand more on this, but how is insulin slowing or affecting metabolic rate in this way? Yeah, so there are likely multiple mechanisms, but the one that we have pointed a finger at from my lab with a paper last year, looking at insulin and a follow-up paper this year, looking at ketones, it's that uh, there's a change in the fat cell mitochondria and specifically insulin is slowing down the rate at which the mitochondria are working in a fat cell, essentially priming that fat pump to store energy rather than use it. And in contrast, if insulin is low and arguably ketones elevated, that is stimulating the metabolic rate. So it's pushing this fat cell to shift its characteristic of wanting to store energy to actually using it, not just using it, but wasting it. It's burning through fat uh, and even glucose just for the sake of producing heat, which is chemically speaking, an evidence of an inefficiency. But of course, in our um, calorie rich environment, what we would call an inefficiency ends up being a huge blessing because it's helping the body uh, have another outlet for all the energy that it's taking in. This is amazing stuff. So what I heard you say right there is fat cells can kind of adopt different personalities yeah. based upon their hormonal or metabolic environment. And I think that doesn't really get talked about in the calories in, calories out conversation when it comes to weight loss. And this is how, why hormones are, they matter. Yeah, yeah, it, absolutely. Yeah, my hope is that this idea of, of acknowledging the evidence that hormones, insulin being among the top, if not the top, in controlling metabolic rate, that this introduces a bit more of a nuance where there are these maybe two camps, although I would argue the calorie in, calorie out camp is far more dogmatic and refuses to acknowledge the other, but then the other one being that it's just about insulin, I, I argue really that it's, much, it's just more nuanced than that. Certainly energy intake matters, energy output matters, hormones just tell the body what to do with energy, including whether to store it or to burn it or to just, well, waste it. Yeah, fascinating stuff. So one last thing that you talked about is how insulin causes the fat cells to actually enlarge. Oh, yeah. What are the consequences of that? Yeah, so there are studies to show that at the actual site of insulin injection in diabetics, the fat cells can be roughly five times the size of a normal fat cell. As the fat cell is expanding in a way kind of beyond its borders, it loses ready access to capillaries. So getting the oxygen that it needs in particular becomes a problem just because the cell is just too big. And we can't, we can't have that gas diffusion taking in the oxygen and pu uh, pushing off the CO2. As the fat cell becomes hypoxic, uh, so the deficiency of oxygen, it then becomes inflammatory. And so, and insulin resistant. So it starts releasing inflammatory proteins called cytokines, and it starts releasing free fatty acids. Even when insulin is trying to tell the fat cell to keep the free fat, the fat, now it's leaking it. And that combination of increased um, cytokines and increased free fatty acids, then eventually starts to share this insulin resistance throughout the body. So while the fat cell may be one of, if not the first cell to fall, the others quickly follow.
So it's like dominoes, and once it starts, it's just hard to kind of take that back. And I'm sure in your book that comes out later this summer, you're going to talk more about that. What's the title of the book, and where can people learn more about it? Yeah, thanks, Mike. Uh, the title of the book is Why We Get Sick, and it's available for sale, pre-order now, anywhere books are sold, and the official release date is July 21, so be prepared to be schooled. Oh my gosh, I'm super excited about this. And I know everyone was taking pictures of that, which is awesome because you're, I mean, in terms of podcast guests that all these different people have and, and videos on the internet, you're one of the most popular because Ben, you have a really unique way of like breaking things down so simply so people can remember this and then translate that message to the people that need to hear it. So I just, people love your work. I love your work. I'm grateful that you're here. Keep it up. Really appreciate you. Well, thanks so much. It's my pleasure. pleasure. Awesome. Thanks for tuning in, friends. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please share it with a friend or family member that would benefit from learning more about how insulin affects their metabolic rate. Bam. All right. Awesome. You're a rock star. Thank you so much. I'm excited for your new book. Thanks, Mike.